Today we're at the Upper Coastal Plain Research Station near Rocky Mount and we're looking at some research we have going on that's funded by the soybean producers at, with the checkoff dollars that everybody contributes. With the impending uh, release of dicamba cotton and soybeans, there's going to be a lot more dicamba applied in the state and we need to know what's going on and how these soybeans will react to Hopefully we don't see a lot of non-target movement, but we assume that that might happen. So we want to know how these soybeans will react and things that we can do to mitigate some of that drift and injury we might see. Some of the things that we can do to reduce drift and really try to keep from seeing this injury we see in these plots is make sure we're using the right nozzles, make sure our booms are low, and we're using the right herbicides, make sure we're using the dicamba formulations that are labeled for the crops that we'll be spraying. We really have to make sure we keep these applications on target. Don't spray in a windy day. Make sure it's not over 85 degrees. And probably the easiest thing to follow is to make sure we don't have a sensitive crop nearby, you know, downwind especially. But just try to make sure we're aware of what we're doing and manage these applications. How close is too close? Uh, I'm a conservative guy by nature, so it's going to depend on the crop. If I can see tobacco and the wind's blowing that direction, I won't put dicamba out. That's just me. Uh, if, if you're a gambler, you might say, you know, two or three hundred yards um, would be okay, give a little bit of buffer, but you want to make sure you're not drifting to the sensitive crops. And with dicamba especially, uh, tobacco and soybeans are some of the most sensitive crops we grow in the state.